using social media for social good is a special opportunity for those of us who call international development and communications our profession, our art, and our responsibility. Today we're going to hear from someone who sits in a privileged leadership position when it comes to this topic. Kate James is the Chief Communications Officer for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, a leading voice in what we all know is an effort to help solve some of the world's greatest problems and help make sure that all lives have equal value. Kate has worked in the financial services industry where she has helped to revolutionize communications and has been at the top of her profession for organizations such as Citibank and Standard Charter Bank. She brings with her not only tremendous experience, but a passion to make sure that we are all working together to create a better world. With her today comes a message from her organization and some special thoughts about social good, social media, and how we're part of that equation. Help me welcome Kate James. So I want to thank Aaron for that incredibly kind introduction. As you'd expect, social media is enormously important for the work of the foundation. It lets us connect with our grantees, with our partners, and of course, the broader community. It lets us participate in conversations about the issues that really matter to us. And ultimately, it helps inform our thinking and our decision making. One of the things that we're really excited about with the opportunity of social media is how we use it to create a global conversation when so many of the issues that we focus on are truly global development challenges. And what's really clear is what we're seeing is that the barriers between the donors of aid and the recipients on the ground are fast dissolving. To take just one example, I was in Western Kenya in June and had the opportunity to visit a dairy cooperative that was supported by some of our partners. And after the visit to the dairy, I posted a blog, and the blog was about a lady, Catherine, whom I met when I was at the dairy. She was a small dairy farmer who'd seen the opportunity with the dairy to go out and create her own business, helping to transport milk for the farmers to the dairy. She'd started very small with just a mule and a cart, and when I met her, she was doing incredibly well, had increased her business significantly, and now had the opportunity, which was great, to be able to send her children to school for the first time. But what was interesting about the post was the comments, because for the first time, we saw comments from the people who were actually working in the dairy. And it made us think about what the huge opportunity we now had with social media about being able to connect with the recipients of support on the ground, whether it's with the small dairy farmer in Kenya, or the TB sufferer in Western China, or the young mother in an urban slum in India, to be able to connect, to hear their ideas, help us ultimately to make, hopefully, might find much more practical solutions to some of these big development challenges. Now, I'm not saying that it's easy, to create these global conversations. Clearly, there are significant language barriers. But, you know, only recently, we saw that it absolutely is possible. Ban Ki-moon, the United Nations Secretary General, recently held an online conversation where he partnered with Twitter and with Facebook, but also with Weibo, the Chinese equivalent of Twitter, creating a truly global conversation. And what I think was so exciting about that was what you're seeing is the connections now between the corridors of power and the people on the ground, again, enabling people to make much more informed decisions about some of these big development challenges. And as you can imagine, for us, that's super important because that's what our work is all about. To take one of our key priorities, the eradication of polio, we're 99% there, the eradication of the second disease on the planet. But to ensure that we make it to that final 1% and eradicate the disease, we need to have a global coordinated effort. Polio is a disease that's passed from person to person, and with a, mobile, with a global, very mobile population, you can see how easy it is for the disease to spread. And so if we're to eradicate the disease, we need that coordinated effort, both from donor governments, but also for the impacted countries, for the effort on the ground. And to do that effectively, you need to build up a global constituency of support. 
So when we think about social media, we've been thinking about new partners, partners who can help us create that global constituency. I've just come back yesterday from Spain, where I was visiting one of our newest partners, FC Barcelona. Some of you will know FC Barcelona. It's, after all, just about the biggest football club in the world, with an amazing global brand. And at the moment, it's got undoubtedly the most successful football player in Messi. It has a huge global fan following of some 20 million. And so the campaign that we launched with FC Barcelona in July, more than a goal, was all about seeing how do you harness all the excitement and the energy of the FC Barcelona fan base in the fight against polio. We launched in July with the video. And what you'll see in this shot here is the, uh, is the page from our YouTube video. It reached out to more than 120 countries. And again, what was really exciting was just seeing the diversity of comments. What you hear, see here is some comments in Arabic from people in the Middle East, excited about the fact that we had an Arabic presenter in the video. Again, in the same way of having the commentators from the dairy on, Catherine, on the post about Catherine, just showing that it is possible to build a global constituency of support and really to create that global conversation. In a minute, I'm going to hand over to Melinda Gates, one of our co-chairs, who I hope many of you after today will now be following on Twitter. She joined Twitter this morning at Melinda Gates. <laughs> so before I hand over her, though, to, to her, though, I just wanted to sort of finish on just a couple of points, particularly addressing to all of you who are out there posting to thinking about and using all your expertise in the room. When we think about polio, there are two big challenges for us in engaging audiences and building that global community of support. Firstly, we're in a very fortunate position in the West today in that polio is not a disease of our generation. If you think of photos of the sufferers of polio, they're invariably in black and white. It's a disease of our grandparents' generation. So the question is, how do we engage an audience today to see the resonance and to engage in the support for the fight against polio. And the second point, which is really key, is about how do we reach out and create a global conversation? How do all of us build out our networks so that they're not just networks about who you know, but we reach out to new people, stretch those networks to create truly global constituencies and a global conversation about these big global development challenges that need significant support. Thank you very much, and I'm going to hand over to Melinda. Hello, I'm Melinda Gates, and I'm so pleased to be participating in the Social Goods Summit because I share your belief that social media can be a powerful force for social good. Engaging in thoughtful conversations on the issues that matter and sharing our stories of what's working will ultimately save lives. At the moment, an incredible story is unfolding, the eradication of polio. We are 99% of the way to wiping out this disease forever. I want to share the video you're about to see with everyone at this summit. I think it captures the historical significance of the fight to end polio, as well as the importance of aiming for what sometimes seem like unachievable goals. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. So Houston, you're a go for landing, Elvis. I don't understand. Go for landing. 3,000 feet. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. The angle has landed. We must not allow fear to stand in our way.
Good afternoon. My name is Peg Willingham, and I'm with the United Nations Foundation. And the video that you